I first wanted to discuss the self-discovery component. So self-discovery helps students develop confidence and lays the foundation for their life today. So there are different assessments that we have students complete at different grade levels. So from middle school into high school, students take different assessments. These are meant to help your student with their social emotional awareness of their own unique strengths and capabilities. We have an assessment that's called the Strengths Explorer Assessment that helps students learn more about themselves and then connects their own unique strengths to different careers and pathways. This then helps your student think about what steps they need to take in order to achieve their career interests. And it also helps develop that self-knowledge as well as that personal and intrinsic motivation so that they're excited to think about their future. And it's not that dreaded question by the time they graduate or before they're about to graduate that they're stressed out about what their goals might look like. So we have different assessments because not one assessment helps students. So we want to give students a variety of choices that they can use to help themselves to learn about their self-awareness and get that excitement for future careers. When we think about careers itself, we have three different categories of careers in the Navient's platform. So we have career clusters, and these are our broadest category of information. These are things that are very similar to uh, fields or industries of work. And this is our broadest classification of jobs is meant to help a student have a starting point for doing a deeper dive into the information. We don't want to just start students with having thousands of careers to look at, They're very overwhelmed and not really sure where to start. So we start with clusters and then year after year, we help students narrow down into the clusters and pathways that they're interested in. Now pathways offer more known and popular career choices like teaching or training or banking services. Within each of the clusters, there are three to five different pathways. And then specifically within the career profiles themselves, students actually learn about real professions and job titles. Again, there's thousands of job titles across the country. So we wanna help students guide them through finding the ones that are meaningful or the most appropriate for them. This granular information gives students awareness about the wages associated to specific careers, as well as the educational requirements and how they might be able to work in this field one day. So within the career research tools, our goal is to help students build awareness. Uh, really and see all the different opportunities there are. And by comparing that with their strengths and their interests, finding the right career interest for them. Post-secondary success depends on strong work readiness skills and knowledge. Most students need help understanding what job expectations and training needs are. And with Navient, students have the tools and resources to explore their career interests and create a resume of skills and knowledge that will build an individual plan towards their career goals. And lastly, this is my last slide before I jump into the demo here. Uh, it's about finding the right match for colleges. So for your students that are looking into careers that do require some form of post-secondary education. And when I say post-secondary education, that can mean anything. It could be a two-year school. It could be a certification. It could be a four-year school or even graduate programs. Whatever the goals are, we wanna help your students find the right match in colleges. So more research shows that finding the right college improves students' persistence in their post-secondary education and also increases opportunities for job placement. So there's more assurance that the college you're choosing will help lead you to the job that you're looking for. So through various college research tools and Navients, students will be able to find out important knowledge about the college application process and ensuring that their professional goals align with the school that they're going to. I'm very much from the generation of that I had no choice from my parents, I was going to college. And so while I definitely appreciated that, we want to make sure that finding the right school will help your students be successful in their professional goals as well. We have a variety of different college research tools that help students find the right match. One of our more popular tools that I'll provide a demonstration of tonight is called our Navient's Supermatch. Supermatch makes it easy for students to explore their post-secondary options and discover colleges that are a match academically and a fit with the experience they're looking for. So are they looking to live on campus or off campus? Do they wanna do virtual classes? Do they wanna be in person? Our intuitive search function and different onboarding cues help students filter from over 80 different data points, such as job placement, 
uh, test optional schools, and even financial information on these colleges as well. So I'll make sure that we look at that uh, when we do the uh, demonstration. Based off of their college profile searches, students will be able to learn more about that ac the acceptance and admissions process and help make sure that by the time they're seniors and applying to colleges, they're investing their time and money in the college applications for the ones that they really wanna go to. So what we'll do next here is we will jump into a demonstration of our platform so that we can all take a look at the tool itself and uh, help answer any questions that you guys might have. Again, feel free to put any questions in the chat here. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen just for one moment, just cause I need to pull up an account for us to walk through. All right here. One second. Okay, let me share my screen again. All right. So what we're going to do next is spend the next like 20 minutes just kind of walking through and showing you all what the student side and parent side of Navience looks like. So when we look at Navience, we call it Navience student. There are actually two sides of the platform. There's a staff facing side and then a student and parent side. The staff right side really just lets family, lets staff members uh, monitor and keep track of students and make sure that they're doing activities and the student and parent side is really for your student to do those activities. So from this homepage that you see on my screen here, uh, your students might see a welcome message from their school or their counselor on the left hand side. And then on the right side here, this is where we encourage students to create a list of the uh, careers, the courses, as well as the colleges that they're interested in. You know, just by favoriting a career, students are more likely to work towards achieving it. So we want to make sure that they're creating a list they're interested in. As we scroll down here, uh, students may be assigned activities for them to work on. Important to do's and tasks, students will be able to see what their counselor has assigned them to work on. Again, MCP has a district-wide scope and sequence activities for each grade level to work on. You'll actually be able to find the scope and sequence on the MCPS school counseling website. So if you were to go to the MCPS website and look for the scope and sequence, you'll be able to see what activities for each grade level do we ask students to complete in Navience. And those could be things like taking assessments, favoriting careers, favoriting colleges, so that ultimately by the time they are graduating, we're ensuring that every student has performed all of the activities. Up at the top of the screen here, your students will have these tabs that go across the top right-hand corner of the screen. So from the courses tab all the way through my planner, students will be going into each one of these at different times throughout middle school and high school and working on different activities. The very first place I wanted to start with was the my planner section. Again, just like on the home page where it tells your students what activities they have to work on, the my planner tab has a place called tasks where they can also see what activities they've been working on. Again, anything that your student has been assigned to complete or has already done will show up on this page. This is just a demonstration account. That's why there's nothing here. This isn't tied to any particular student or information in MCPS. So this is just a blank account here. So as we look at this information, you'll be able to see on the left what tasks you need to work on. And on the right, anything that your student has completed. All of their information moves year after year. So as your students start using this, school, this tool, if they started in middle school, by the time they've gotten to their senior year, they'll have years of completed activities that they can look back on and see all the progress they've made towards working towards their goals. And speaking of goals, there is a section within the My Planner tab here called Goals. We encourage students to think about different types of goals, whether they're academic goals, personal goals, uh, or other goals. We use a SMART goal template. And if you see here, when I click in to create a goal, we use the term SMART goal, and that stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. Our goal is with these is that your students think beyond what's the goal that they have. You ask the student what goal that they want, and it's just to pass a class or get straight A's. We want them to think more beyond that. We want them to think about what steps will they take to achieve that goal, 
How will they know that they've achieved that goal? And where do you need help? Or who do you need to get help from to make sure that you get this goal? A lot of research goes into students creating goals and meaningful mean that students are thinking and investing in what they need to do to work towards achieving those goals. I apologize if you hear my dog barking. There's probably someone at my door. The next tab here that we have is called the About Me tab. So the About Me tab is really where your students can see all of the progress that they've made so far. So under this demo account here, I can see that there's different assessments that I can take. And I mentioned earlier that we call the assessments our self-discovery process. Uh, I mentioned earlier that we have like a strengths explorer assessment. This helps students learn about their own personal and unique strengths, and it gives suggestions for different careers. We also have other assessments like a career interest profiler that uses the Holland occupational theory to help students research and find careers based off of their personal interests, as well as a career cluster finder assessment. Our career cluster finder assessment is our most basic assessment. It usually only takes students about 10 to 15 minutes for them to take. And it's a really good starting point because it ranks all of the 16 career clusters we have in Navience from their most preferred to their least preferred. And so it helps students start to see where they might find a field of interest that they like and definitely the ones that they might not be interested in. Uh, most commonly, a lot of students across the country, the number one favorite career cluster is the arts. And usually the least favorite career cluster for students and teenagers is going to be things like transportation or manufacturing. Again, the purpose of these assessments and the career information is to make sure we're giving students awareness and broadening their horizons as to what they think uh, a career might be versus what's actually out there that they could participate and make the world a better place. Navians itself on the left here, you'll also see that there's surveys. Navians is a tool also that the school can use to survey students, whether it's a brag sheet or uh, taking some feedback about a class or an activity that the school did. This just helps collect information and feedback from the student and so that they can have their voice be heard into things as well. At the top of the page, we also have our resume tool. So under my name here, I can click into our resume tool. Our resume tool is meant to help students for a couple of different reasons. Obviously, it helps them generate a resume, which is obviously great for job applications or internships or even scholarship applications. But what we really want students to do is to use this tool throughout their time so that they can keep a log of everything that they've participated in. So I can click on the plus button here on the far right hand side of the screen and I can work experience, volunteer activities, extracurriculars or clubs that I've been a part of, awards, music achievements, athletic achievements, anything that I've participated in. So when I click on to add a field, it gives me a template for me to use that will help me build a resume. A lot of students don't necessarily know where to start when it comes to writing their very first resume. I'm an adult and I still have trouble writing my own resume. And so this just helps students and gives them some guidance around what fields and what things that they should be writing into their resume. Over time, they can keep coming back to this place to add more and more content to their resume. And when they're ready, they can go to this print or export tool at the top and it will give them an option to create a generated resume. And there's three different templates that we offer. This will give students a preview of what a template might look like. So it takes all the information that they've put into those sections and fields and templates, and it drops it into a pre-formatted resume for them that they could just use to print and send to different organizations um, or a person that they're looking to get hired by. So this resume tool is awesome for giving students that kickstart that they need to help them be successful in whatever internships, apprenticeships, career fairs, scholarship, college applications that they're applying for. When we go now into the careers tab here, the careers tab is our next one. We have a variety of different tools here for the career exploration. Again, just like with the about me tab, your students have access to those assessments under the career section as well. So they can take those assessments our Strengths Explorer assessment, I will just say, is the only assessment in our platform that students can only take once. Uh, the other two assessments students can take multiple times. Obviously, their, their interests are going to change as they grow, uh, but the Strengths Explorer is our only assessment that can only be taken one time. 
The Strengths Ex Explorer is actually created by an organization called Gallup. If you're familiar with Gallup, they do a lot of research in different fields like education, uh, medicine, as well as political polling as well. They designed this assessment, and so they uh, give the uh, ability for students to take the assessment in Navient so that they can learn more about careers, but they only allow students to take it once. Again, the assessment like the career cluster finder or the career interest profiler, students can take more than one time if they'd like. So it just helps them learn more about themselves as they grow up too. As I mentioned at the very beginning, uh, we have a tool in our career section that's called Road Trip Nation. Road Trip Nation, again, is a PBS affiliate. Uh, it's uh, usually interviews that are being done by young people, usually of high school age or college age, and they're interviewing people from all across the country. And so we've done over a thousand different uh, leaders have been interviewed across 48 different topics, as well as 29 different interest areas. So because there is so much and so many videos that students can watch, we do give a little short three question quiz that helps students narrow down what they want to watch. And we call it the what's your road. So one of the first questions here is it doesn't matter what I'm doing as long as I'm blank. So we give students the opportunity to interact a bit and click what they care about. Maybe I care about problem solving. And then it asks me what I lose time. I lose track of time learning about whether it's the armed services, fashion, entrepreneurship, uh, nonprofits. I'm gonna hit food because I'm a big fan of food. And then it asks me lastly, what's one more topic that I'm interested in? And so maybe it's uh, travel. I love, I miss traveling. I don't know about you guys, but I miss it. <laughs> so it's gonna tell me that my road is all about problem solving while exploring the worlds of food and travel. So instead of having thousands of people now to look at, I can just see the people that are relative to the topics I'm interested in watching. So I can see the name of the person, what their job title is and where they work. Um, and I can also see tags that are associated to what field they work in. So most of these people work in food or they work in travel. I can see here, Elise is one of our most popular videos of Road Trip Nation. She is a food scientist over at Jelly Belly, the, the candy company, the jelly, jelly bean company. And so you can see when I click on her name, I get a little bit of a bio here about her on the left. And then there's different video excerpts from the interview on the right hand side. Because we know that students might not have five, 10 minutes to watch an entire interview, we cut them up into excerpts just to help speed up the process so that they can watch a video that they care about. So there's topics here about being open and embracing new challenges, uh, not being afraid to make mistakes. This is just meant to help provide some personal inspiration to students. And we generally get a lot of great feedback from students that these do make them excited to think about what careers that they wanna participate in and what their opportunities are. So students just have to click on the video and it'll automatically start playing for them. We also include clo closed captions. So if there's no headphones or audio here, you can also click on the closed captions and, and read the interview as well. Um, you can see here too at the very bottom, if students are interested, they can watch the entire interview if they'd like. This one's about six minutes, so it shouldn't take too much time, but we understand that there's other priorities. And so they can watch the shorter versions here on the right-hand side of the screen. If students are interested, they can also just browse by interest. So at the very top of the screen, they can browse by interest. I get lots of questions about how Navians can help students who are looking into joining the military. So we have lots of videos here about uh, people who currently or have served in the different branches of the armed services. I also get lots of questions about students who want to be entrepreneurs and start their own businesses. So there's lots of resources for students in any field that they're looking at uh, joining one day. Also for those kids looking to play sports professionally, there's lots of great content here for, for athletes and professional athletes as well. We also have them broken out by themes and these are meant to help students have more social emotional conversations. There's a really big push in the country for social emotional and mental health and well being, And so we wanna help students feel confident and comfortable coming to someone that they trust to have to these different types of conversations, whether it's about Fear, we have an entire category of conversations about fear or failure. Again, research shows today that teenagers are more stressed and anxious than before. And so we wanna help make sure that students know that they can learn about these different themes and topics. And again, find someone that they trust to have conversations with them about. And then lastly, the actual career content, which is what we wanna help students find out. So again, they can either take assessments and get information about careers 
or they can just freely browse the career clusters that we have in the platform. As I mentioned, we have 16 different career clusters. And again, these are our broadest categorization of information in Navience. It starts with agriculture and goes all the way down to transportation, distribution, and logistics. And so my favorite and the one I love to work in is education and training. And so as we click into different clusters, it's going to give an overview of that particular field, as well as the information related to those pathways. I mentioned that every cluster has its own set of unique pathways. And these are meant to help students understand the educational requirements associated with that particular field. So if I wanted to be an administrator or a professional support services or a teacher, what do I need to do? So I can click into these pathways and it'll tell me where the credentials are and that I might need a master's degree in job administration or a doctoral degree for certain ones as well. I can see more information in the pathways regarding an employment outlook and even a recommended plan of study for what types of courses you might take. Now, this recommended plan of study is based off of the Department of Education, like the National Department of Education, not state specific, but it does help students with this last column here related to the career and technical courses. This helps students understand what is going to be the content that you would expect to learn if you were to work in this particular field. So if I wanted to become an administrator one day, I'd have to take classes on teaching. I'd have to take classes on diversity and uh, specialization courses and leadership. So this just helps get an idea of what types of things and themes would you be learning about for that particular field. As we scroll down, we can see the related occupations associated with this career pathway and even college majors. If you were to click on these majors, it would show you a list of schools and colleges across the country that offer that particular field so that you're again aligning your professional goals to the choices that you have in a college education. If we're interested in looking more into the occupations themselves, and again, these are the actual career profiles, there's thousands of them across the country, uh, we could click into any career field and it'll uh, give me additional information. So from the cluster to the pathway to the career occupation, we wanna help students find the ones that are gonna be most relevant and helpful for them. So careers, the profiles themselves give them an awareness or an overview and an, a set of knowledge and skills that are necessary to be successful in this role. So if I'm looking to become an educator, uh, an education administrator one day, I need to have active listening skills, speaking skills, critical thinking skills. I'll need to be able to write and speak and have good oral and written comprehension, as well as problem sensitivity. And then lastly, these are the subject areas that I'll need to be most uh, knowledgeable in. Uh, administration and management, customer and personal service, uh, personnel and human resources. And at the top here, we can see the most popular tasks and activities. What are the tasks that I would be doing day in and day out? If I'm thinking about investing my time, my money, my education into working into this career, what am I going to be doing every day? So I can get a better sense of what I know that I'm getting myself into. And then lastly, and to be very honest, the number one thing that kids click on is the wages section. And so the wages is going to give students the information related to salaries. You see here, there's a national versus a state average. If your students are interested, they can always show more and that will expand to the rest of the US states and territories. It is broken down by percentiles. Uh, this information is relevant just because of people who respond to census information, uh, people who worked in fields, who have higher degrees, and also live in different parts of the state, uh, make different, mon different amounts of money. So that's why we have the percentiles here for students to see. Generally, someone who's worked in the field, has years of experience, advanced degrees, they're gonna be on the farther right-hand side of this list. Whereas students who have just recently graduated from college um, and are just starting out in the workforce are gonna be looking more towards that left-hand side of the percentile. You can even click on the state itself and it will provide, again, based off of major cities uh, of the state, some information as well. This is great to have conversations with students about differences in cost of living. Uh, the, the larger the city, the more you'll be paid. However, that goes towards more expensive things like housing and other information. So this information you can kind of see at the bottom of the screen. It comes from a few different sources. The Bureau of Labor of Statistics and the U.S. Department of Labor uh, Employment and Training Administration as well. 
Again, this is information based off of census data. So as census data gets updated each year or every few years, this also gets updated in Navient as well. So a lot of great content here that we also want to educate students on as awareness, as awareness related towards their selection in their careers as well. Again, the last kind of next progression that we have here is to the college research tools. So within Navient, students have a variety of tools that will help them to research the colleges that they're interested in. So we have at the very top here, you can obviously, if you already think of a college, you can obviously type in the name of a school. Every college, whether it's a two-year, four-year uh, graduate programs, they all have a profile in Navient. And we collect information from uh, national databases as well as the information from the college website itself and put them all into one place so your students don't have to go digging for information. Uh, again, I kind of mentioned earlier, our most popular college search tool is called the Supermatch here, and it's the very first one under the Find Your Fit. Now, we have a variety of other resources, too, that help students find the right college, but the Supermatch is unique as it's a very personalized experience. Uh, I like to describe Supermatch as almost like an episode of House Hunters on HGTV, if people are familiar. <laughs> um, this information is helpful because you think of what type of college, where do you want to go to school? What type of degree do you want to get? Do you want to go to a school that has a lot of students or a smaller school? more of like a big fish in a, in a small pond kind of deal. So there's criteria that go across the top of the page. Location is usually always the most popular one because that's gonna be the difference paying for in-state versus out-of-state tuition. So I can say that I wanna stay local and I wanna stay in Maryland. That will mean that it will only search for colleges that are in the state of Maryland. So right off the bat here, as I scroll down, I can see colleges that meet my must-haves list of being in the state of Maryland. Now I can continue to add different criteria like academic programs. Now a lot, a lot of students realize that there's more than one different degree type out there. Certificates are awesome for students who are looking to get into nursing or HVAC or technical schools. Same with associate's degrees. Those are wonderful for trades as well as earning associate's credits to transfer those eventually to a bachelor's program or a master's program. There is no one right way to do a post-secondary degree. It is all unique to what your prof professional goals are and what you can uh, what you aspire to be we get into the idea that there's only one way to go to college but there's more than one way to do college and so we want to help give students awareness to those different degree types and know that they have options when it comes to finding the right school for them so students can choose what's going to be the most applicable for them and then as they scroll down, they can type in what topics they're interested in and learning about. These would be associated with majors or minors that they'd like to earn in a particular degree program. Now, just for time, I, I'm not gonna go through every single one of these, but you can kind of see here, we have things like student life. So if students are looking to join clubs or organizations or even participate in an ROTC program, Diversity, I know that uh, the HBCU fair is coming up. I'm always excited. I help participate in the HBCU fair every year for MCPS. So students can filter and look for MC HBCU schools. Uh, there's cost. So things related to the cost associated like tuition and fees and room and board. Uh, additionally, what schools meet 100% of needs. So if you're looking to find a school that helps support paying for the entire tuition, you can find schools that do that as well. There are definitely across the country that help meet 100% of the financial obligations that are associated with attending. Students, again, who are looking to go into professional sports, a college is a gateway to professional sports. So students can identify the sport they'd like to play and at what level would they like to play it? Varsity, rec, or even just for fun, co-ed. So as I scroll down, it's gonna find the schools that meet the, fil the filters that I put at the top of the page here. So I can see the name of the school. These do not appear in any particular order. Uh, we don't, we're not like a Google search engine. Google, if you type in colleges, the colleges that pay Google to show up at the top of the list show up at the top. It's an advertising thing. With Navience, we don't do that. We just show everything at random. Again, just like with careers, we're trying to broaden students' awareness of their options. We're not trying to show a particular school for a particular reason. We're just trying to give them more awareness of the schools that are out there. You can see the academic match. MCPS imports things like GPAs and test scores so that students can compare themselves to the average that that school admits. 
So this again makes it a unique and personalized experience here. So we can also customize these last three columns. The highlights here, I can change it to the athletic programs. I, the cost, I can change it to student life. I can see what the admissions process looks like, if there's a fee associated with it. So this just helps me learn more about these schools faster. Um, again, we encourage students that if they're interested in these schools, add it to your favorites list. The favorites list just means that by the time they're seniors, they already know the schools that they should be thinking about applying to at the start of their senior year. And it gives them that edge to start applying early so they can know sooner rather than later what their plans are gonna be like for the following school year. And so they can continue to scroll down and find all of the different colleges, UMD here, McDaniel, Mount St. Mary's. There's lots of different schools across the state of Maryland that students could choose from. And if I wanted to, I can also click on the name of the school itself. This will give me a lot of information about the college beyond just the supermatch search. Once my page loads here, there we go. So for colleges, this will include videos, pictures of the institution, and there's different tabs that go across the top here. So I can access a virtual tour of this particular school. Because of COVID, many schools had to start offering virtual tours. And so you can get access to that information through Navient also. You can see the academic programs under the studies tab here. What's the student to faculty ratio, student retention, and even job placement rate. The higher the job placement rate, the better this college is at making sure that students graduate and find employment within a year after they've left that school. You can see what the student life is like. Is it a small school, a large school? How far away is it from home? And how many percent of students are living on campus? You can look at the admissions process and see what the cost is associated to apply and even the acceptance rates. And if there's any important policies around waitlisting, early action, uh, appointments and rolling notifications also. And then lastly, we also have costs associated. So you can see and scroll down and learn more about the average amount of federal student loans that are provided to students on average every year. So how much are you expecting to take out in loans to help support your financing of this education as well? Ultimately, by the time your students are finished and done researching colleges and know which ones they're applying to, they will eventually use Navient's their senior year to indicate which colleges they are applying to. So they'll use this section here to create a list of the schools that they've applied to, as well as re requesting transcripts from their counselors and letters of recommendations from their teachers. So this helps keep everything in one place so that everyone can use this tool, counselors, teachers, students, so that they're keeping track of all of their college application materials and that nothing gets lost in translation when trying to submit content. Other piece that we have here is also scholarships. So we have national scholarships here that you'll see as well as local scholarship information. Uh, colleges that offer merit-based scholarships, students could type in what their GPA is and it will automatically populate with colleges that are offering merit-based scholarships. So you can see here the name of the school, how much it's offering in merit-based scholarships, and how much of that total annual cost it's actually paying for. College can definitely be reduced in the cost and the expense just through scholarships, through the success that your student has had in school. So local and regional scholarships appear as well. So those are MCPS specific scholarships that can appear so that everything's in one place. The very last tab here, and then we'll wrap up for today, is going to be the courses tab. The courses tab is that academic planning component. Uh, students can get access to the courses selections so that they can create a four-year plan of the courses that they'd like to take while at MCPS. So this helps students develop a plan that will be customized, and it helps them make a course selection that they'd like to use for future years. This shows all of the different degree types that there are, diploma types, excuse me, the World Language Diploma, Advanced Technology Diploma. Uh, they can select these plans and then pick what courses or programs that they would like to choose. Do they want to do the environmental program, the business or finance? And then they can choose which pathway within each of these programs that they'd like to participate in. So students can build course plans, again, so that their course selection is in alignment with what their career goals are. If they're looking to work in finance, that they're choosing the appropriate courses. 
And then students can make their selections across multiple years for the different subject areas. So for English, math, science, history, everything that they need to make sure that they reach the required graduation credits so that they're not only graduating on time, but ensuring that they've made the appropriate course selection for the schools and hopefully even for the colleges that they're applying to. So Navience again is that one-stop shop. It's meant to be that one-stop shop so that students have so many uh, resources all in one place that monitors and keeps track of things so that counselors can best support your students as well as their teachers as well. So I'm gonna pop back over here to my PowerPoint just so that we can keep going with our evening. And the next thing I wanted to make sure everyone knew about is accessibility. So the big question is, this is a wonderful tool, but how do our kids get into it? And so your students can log in through Navience by logging into their Google account. MCPS uses G Suite to get emails, help students get to Google Classrooms and other applications. So when students log into their Google, they just have to go to that waffle in the top right hand corner and there will be a Navience logo there that will help students get access through a single sign on. They don't have to have a separate username and password. Uh, this just directly logs them into Navience. So it uses their MCPS Google login to get them access to Navience. Really easy, really straightforward. We actually just started this this past school year. So it's really exciting that your kids can just easily log into Navience by logging into Google. Parent accounts, we encourage parents to log in with their student using their student information so that you all can follow along and see what your student has done in their Navience account as well. And you can see the assessments and activities that they've participated in while in MCPS. The last thing I just wanted to go over is just a little bit of research here on parent engagement and why it's important. So parent engagement literally refers to any activities that parents engage in that helps their students succeed in school and in life. So it includes everything from making sure that they're prepared to go to school every day to attending meetings like this one tonight. Uh, parent engagement, more research is coming out now, especially during COVID and virtual learning, that it is a vital component to student success. And parents are your child's first teacher and parents are partners with the teachers within the education of your student as well. So just two more slides here and then we'll wrap up. When parents are engaged, we're seeing how it's drastically impacting students. And so when parents are engaged in their students' school lives, students have more home support and knowledge that they need not only to finish their assignments, but also develop a lifelong love of learning. So students receive higher grades and test scores and therefore have a better chance of graduating from not only high school, but also in a post-secondary education as well. So when parents are engaged, students have better attendance, increased motivation, better self-esteem that actually help them be present in school to learn. Then also from the flip side, there's also lots of research as to how parents benefit from your students being, from you and participating and being engaged as well. Not only does it reduce the amount of stress involved in the process, but parents have more confidence in the school as well as the teachers and hold higher expectations and opinions of people as well. And when parents are engaged, they feel more confident in their abilities and are more likely to work towards their own educational goals as well. When parents are engaged, it also helps the overall culture and environment of your county and your school. Teachers feel better about themselves and then do a better job educating your students, which translates to higher student achievement. So when teachers feel more supported and valued by parents, everybody's success improves. And lastly, when parents invest in a relationship with their children's school, the school has a better reputation in the community, which increases more interest and more community involvement from different stakeholders. So there's lots of reasons why parent engagement is important. And ultimately, it's to get your students through that success at the end of their time at MCPS. I know there are a couple questions in the chat, so I'm going to answer those next year with our last 10 minutes. But if anyone has to run and make dinner, um, just a few next steps here. Uh, definitely, if you're excited and you're interested in learning more about Navience, feel free to take a look at our website. We have a, a, a lot of solutions here, a lot of support for parents. You can go to our website at Navience.com, but also MCPS has wonderful resources on their site as well about our Navience platform and how they specifically use it with your students. Definitely encourage your students to have these conversations at home. So encourage your child to explore the different career pathways and the assessments in Navience, as well as just asking them about their academic plans and their goals that they have. 
And then lastly, if you do have questions, the main point of contact for you about Navient is going to be your student school counselor. They have been extensively trained in using Navient and know pretty much all the ins and outs about it. They, I hope they do. I trained them. So contact your school counselor if you need support or if you just have general questions about wanting to use Navient more with your student and what you could be doing to help them out because they could always use more help uh, with all the things that they're expected to do in their role as well.